2004, these was a year that altered the football landscape. Can you foresee a team other than Bayern Munich or Borussia Dortmund winning the German Bundesliga? A Southern European team lifting the UEFA Euro? A team that goes undefeated in the Premier League? A Portuguese league team winning the UEFA Champions League? Teams other than Real Madrid and Barcelona have won La Liga. These things can happen once in a while, as Leicester City did in 2016, when they won the Premier League in one of the greatest sporting stories of all time. But what if everything unfolded all at once, in the same year? Yes, you heard me right, the same year. Let me present before you the year football went weird, with series of roller coaster of events, and the football fans all around the world may not see these happened once again for a long while. A handful of strange things happened in that season. The season saw the emergence of new managers, new records achieved, as well as some teams win their last league title till date. Join us as we relive 2004 and discover why the football world would never forget this remarkable year. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell to know when we release new video. A year forever ingrained in the minds of Greeks. As the full-time whistle was called in the final, the weight was lifted off the shoulders of the Greek players in the stadium. That energy was transferred to Greeks across the world who celebrated the nation's maiden European triumph. They entered the tournament as complete underdogs with not a single football pundit tipping the country for victory. Drawn in what could have been considered the group of death, with Portugal and Spain being heavy tournament favorites, every match was a must-win. From this, Greece decided to show Europe they were a title contender, beating Cristiano Ronaldo's and Lius Figo's Portugal in round one. With fortune on their side, they managed to progress to the knockout stage of the competition, defeating Spain who shared the same goal difference, yet with two less goals scored against their opponents. The Greek players weren't able to sit and celebrate, facing off against France in the quarterfinal, who featured the likes of Thierry Henry and Robert Pires. France grew frustrated with Greece's solid defensive play and proceeded to lose the match 1-0. As if the Greek gods were smiling upon them, the nation was slotted against Czech Republic for semi-finals. As prophetic as a match can be, the Greece team were to face their first-round opponents, Portugal, in the Euro 2004 final. For the first time in a major football tournament, the last match featured the same teams as the opening match. Held in Portugal, the odds were against Greece. 60,000 Portugal fans flooded the stadium. Greece were forced to draw all their attention onto the field to claim a victory against the home nation, with Cheristeas heading the ball in the 57th minute. Ronaldo and Figo attempted to break the Greek defensive line multiple times, only to be denied. The victory would forever be considered one of the greatest underdog tales in football history. A legacy has been left for the next generation of footballers. Greece national team with their Euro Cup, first major trophy in their history, and the last till date. Another thing to add to this wonderful year, a team from outside the top five football leagues lifted the prestigious UEFA Champions League title. Portuguese club FC Porto won the tournament after defeating AS Monaco 3-0 at the Arena auf Schalke in Gelsenkirchen, Germany in the finals. A final between Monaco and Porto would have been unthinkable when the Champions League kicked off in the summer of 2003. Both sides were perennial underdogs throughout the competition, hailing from unfancied leagues but coached by two burgeoning managers in Didier Deschamps and José Mourinho. No matter which of the final four had progressed into the final, the game was bound to stick out like a sore thumb in footballing history. The defeated semi-finalists were Chelsea and Deportivo La Coruna, two sides with next to no European pedigree. It was another example of 2004 being the year of the underdog. The final itself was a one-way traffic with Mourinho's Porto taking full advantage of Monaco losing their creative talisman, Ludovic Juli, early on to injury and strolling to a 3-0 win. FC Porto, Champions League winners. 
still sounds weird all these years later. To add to that, it announced the rise of one among the best managers in the coming decade, a young and vibrant Jose Mourinho, who joined Chelsea after the final. They defeated Manchester United, Lyon, and Deportivo La Coruna on the road to finals. The team couldn't boast of any presence of superstars in the team, only squad full of generational talents like Maniche, Ricardo Carvalho, Paulo Ferreira, Constinha, Nuno Valente, Captain Jorge Costa, and Deco. It was more of teamwork and tactical mastermind of the special one, Jose Mourinho. Porto's outstanding qualities were their defensive shape and their incredibly effective offside trap. There are a couple of weird things about Arsenal's Invincibles team. On the most basic level, a Premier League team going a full campaign without losing is rather ridiculous. Perhaps even stranger, though, is the fact that they did not enjoy even more success. Arsenal Wenger's squad was the best in Europe in 2004 and their defeat to a largely unremarkable Chelsea side in the quarterfinals of the champions. Ligue badly dented their legacy. The Gunners suffered a similarly strange defeat to Steve McLaren's Middlesbrough in the semi-finals of the League Cup. Two weird, out-of-character defeats for such a fantastic team. Well, that's 2004 for you, we suppose. The 2003-2004 season in English football saw something which is new to the league as Arsenal won the league undefeated. The former Arsenal manager, Arsene Wenger, in a press conference before the start of the season 2003-2004, made a bizarre claim that his side would go undefeated in the Premier League. Even his players might have doubted the manager, but at the end of the season, Arsenal's stats were played 38, won 26, draw 12, and lost nil. That was an incredible achievement in the history of the Premier League, as the team continued its unbeaten run to 49 games in the league. The team consisted of many modern-day greats, such as Thierry Henry, Patrice Vieira, Robert Pires, Dennis Bergkamp, Freddy Ljungberg, to name few. Arsenal finished with 90 points, 11 points ahead of runners-up Chelsea. They also won the FA Cup that year. In order to honor their unique achievement, the North London Club was presented with a golden trophy. Yes, Werder Bremen, the German champions for the season, 2003-2004. The club from the city of Bremen finished at the top of the league with 74 points from 34 matches, which included 22 wins, 8 draws, and 4 losses. Brazilian forward Ailton scored 28 goals for the champions and won the top scorer award. Former German midfielder and current sporting director of Werder Bremen, Frank Baumann was the captain of the squad. The team was managed by the club legend Thomas Schaff, who spent 41 years at the club both as player and manager coming from the youth ranks. Unfortunately, this was the last top-flight title for Bremen who is now only a mid-table club in the Bundesliga. At the end of the 2003-2004 season, Werder Bremen won an unlikely Bundesliga title. Bremen's side was unspectacular on paper and lacked the star power of heavy favorites Bayern Munich, who had dominated the league for a decade along with Borussia Dortmund. And yet, spurred on by the goal-scoring heroics of Ailton, who would never go close to replicating the remarkable 28 goals he managed that season. Die Werderaner clinched the title by six points. This shock victory was clearly not enough, and they went on to lift the DFB Pokal soon after. Their run to the final was weird. There's a surprise, eh? They managed to avoid any challenging games, eventually defeating second-tier Alemannia Aachen, who had knocked out Bayern and Borussia Mönchengladbach in previous rounds to secure the trophy. Their two triumphs were unexpected, and the beautiful weirdness of 2004 was only just getting started. Another surprise. The Spanish champions for the 2003-2004 season were the club from Mestalla Stadium, Valencia finished at the top of the table with 77 points in 38 games, including 23 wins, 8 draws, and 7 losses. Runners-up FC Barcelona was 5 points shy of the top. 
Valencia was managed by the Spaniard Rafael Benitez, still, the prior campaign, Los Ches has finished fifth, and this was also during the time of Real Madrid's Galacticos. Rafa Benitez's side really had no right to win La Liga and the UEFA Cup in 2004. The key members of the squad were Mista, Sanchez Moreno, Ricardo Oliveira, Roberto Ayala, and Mauricio Pellegrino. Mista was the top scorer for Valencia, with 19 goals in the league. Apart from the league glory, Valencia was also victorious in the UEFA Cup, which later came to be known as UEFA Europa League. However, they were knocked out of the Copa del Rey by Real Madrid, which ended their hopes of a treble. Some of Benitez's key performers were bleached hair stopper Santiago Canizares, flying winger Vicente, and enigmatic number 10 Pablo Aymar, 